なんということだ全人類の思いが世界に取り付いた少女がそれを背負うというのか自ら原因を取り除く神になってしまう人としての欲望を奪うしかない人類の未来を望む思いがこの子から理解を奪してくれせめて名前を Yo, what's going on, guys? This is Brendan Mushi, and today we're going to be recapping and breaking down the Guilty Gear Strive story. This is actually the third video in an ongoing series, so if you haven't seen my first two videos that recap the entire Guilty Gear story leading up to Strive, definitely check those out. So, if you've already seen the story for Strive and you found yourself consistently asking what in the actual hell is even happening, don't worry, you're not alone. Welcome to Fighting Game Stories. Now, the story of Guilty Gear Strive takes place three weeks after Guilty Gear Exert Revelator, where the Universal Will, who was inhabiting Ariellis, the Sanctus Populized Body, as a Vessel had its plans to destroy humanity ruined as it had been defeated by Soul Bad Guy. If you don't remember, the Universal Will was the powerful super robot from the backyard who was created by the Sage, also called the Original, the first human to discover magic as well as the backyard and return home alive. At the end of Exert Revelator, when Ariellis was defeated, her human body remains locked up in a prison cell. Meanwhile, Jacko, the other half of Ariel's consciousness, salvaged by that man, was successfully merged with the remaining portion of Aria's soul that remained in justice. This act would restore Ariel. A whole turning Jacko into a human. So then everything should be peaceful and the story's over, right? Well,、uh, turns out Daisuke said no, it's definitely not over. So let's take a deep dive into the story of Guilty Gear Strive, the Phantom Pain. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Every night, I can feel my leg and my arm, even my fingers. But before that, one more thing to note at the end of Revelator, that man meets with Soul after decades of tension and hatred between the two. Soul tells Sin, when you see a man with those eyes, they're the eyes of a man picking a fight. Why? We don't know yet. As I stated before, Jacko had successfully merged with Arya's soul that remained in justice, restoring Arya whole again, just as that man swore he would one day accomplish. However, despite that Arya's soul has returned, Arya's consciousness would still remain dormant behind Jacko's consciousness. This leaves Jacko feeling as if she's temporarily borrowing Arya's body and counting down the days when eventually Arya's consciousness would return. But the purpose of this scene is to inform us that that man, otherwise known as Asuka, has one more thing left he needs to take care of, and it involves ridding the world of Soul Bad Guy. The faded fight. Between the two doesn't occur here as the two part ways, and that man turns himself into the government after years of being branded a wanted war criminal. During the wait until Arya's consciousness would fully awaken, Jacko continues to wear her halo even though she doesn't need to, and she continues to work alongside Soul Bad Guy on his bounty hunting missions. So during a bounty run with Bay, Soul is abruptly called by Kai Kisuke to come to Illyria Castle where he learns that Eno has broken into Ariel's jail cell and took something from her, or I guess you could say someone. All that's revealed at this point in the story is that the thing Eno took from Ariellis is something that would give Eno insane power. Eno mentions that this is a power that belongs to her. Ariellis warns Eno that this power isn't something she'll be able to control. Eno laughs this off and pulls a being out of her body that looks like a member of the gorillas known as Happy Chaos. Meanwhile, that man is being transported via the President of the United States' personal vehicle. Word gets out about that man being apprehended, and naturally the entire world hates him and wants to see him dead due to what everyone perceived to be his actions during the Crusades. Like, imagine if it was discovered that Hitler came back to life and his location. Was leaked on the internet. That's pretty much how this is going right now. Then suddenly, Anji Mita Fujin K follow ups over the car, commenting, So it's you, after seeing that man's face. He then mentions to Chip via phone that the other one must be in Illyria. In true Guilty Gear fashion, none of this makes any sense, but essentially, Anji is hinting that there may be more than one that man. More on this later. Elsewhere, Happy Chaos has a little chat with Eno. If you'll remember before in the Exert video, I stated that Jacko revealed to Eno that she was incomplete. Happy Chaos mentions to Eno that he is the reason Eno is incomplete because he took half of her power from her. As Jacko Stated in Exert Revelator, Eno was artificially born in the backyard from the collective will of humanity's wish for a brighter future during the Crusades. So, who is Happy Chaos and why did he take half of Eno's power from her? Well, you're not supposed to know yet, so please don't rush me. I mean, unless you already watched the story, then like,、uh, you already know. But I digress. Happy Chaos mentions that he is not interested in anything except being a menace to society and having Black Air Force energy. And since Eno's plans are just about as chaotic as it could get, he's on board. Eno mentions that what she wants is a future. Happy Chaos then spawns a car using GTA cheat codes as the two depart in order to realize their goal of turning Eno into a god by restoring the immense power that was once stolen from her. 
Meanwhile, back at the White House, that man is taken into hiding by US President Vernon that remarks Asuka doesn't seem like the devil he's portrayed to be. He also mentions that it's kind of sus that he turned himself in during the G4 summit. So just to clarify what G4 is, it's otherwise known as the Group of Four. It's basically the four leaders of the four major countries in the Guilty Gear universe. The G4 summit is when all four leaders meet to discuss world matters. It is at the G4 summit that Vernon intends to announce demilitarization of the world in order to enact world peace. Each world leader is accompanied by strong security. Vernon asks that man what he's really up to. That man explains he wants to destroy two things, the first being the Tome of Origin, which is the book that the original sealed all that the backyard was into in hopes that no evil would ever find it, and the second is Soul Bad Guy. Elsewhere, Happy Chaos explains to Eno that she lacks something that every normal human has, which is desire. He doesn't mean that in like a you lack resolve kind of way, like no, he means like she, she literally lacks the human emotion of desire. Happy Chaos goes on to say that in order to get Eno's power back, they need the Tome of Origin, but there's three problems. One, currently Asuka has possession of it and is being guarded in the White House during G4 Summit where there's maximum security. Number two, if G4 gets canceled, Asuka might run away because all with all that security there, of course Asuka is going to be there. But if G4 gets canceled and there's no security, then Asuka is going to run into hiding. This is the reason that Asuka arrived at the White House and turned himself into the government conveniently during G4 because he knew that there'd be a lot of security at the White House during this time that could protect him and the Tome of Origin. You see, Asuka knows that Eno is going to be looking for the Tome, so of course he'd hide where the most security is. However, based on what Eno recently did with Arielis, the world is afraid of her. So Happy Chaos mentions that they need to make sure that G4 does not get cancelled due to fear of Eno because if it gets cancelled, then Asuka might run away. Happy Chaos decided that he'll deal with the first problem by infiltrating the White House himself in order to find Asuka and find the Tome. Meanwhile, Eno will deal with the second problem where she'll get intentionally captured so that news gets out that she isn't a threat anymore so G4 doesn't get cancelled. And the third problem they have is Soul Bad Guy's hands. So to deal with this, Happy Chaos decides they'll need some muscle who can fight Soul Bad Guy for them. Due to Kai's request, Sol arrives at Illyria Castle and is briefed on the situation with Eno stealing a power from Arielis, and he also tells Sol that the US military is requesting Sol to appear at G4 for security in case Eno and Happy Chaos or anyone else decide to attack it. Eno and Happy Chaos appear at an apartment complex where deep beneath it lies a person they intend to use to fight Sol bad guy, so in order to access him they decide to blow it the fuck up. The person Happy Chaos intends to recruit to fight for them is none other than Nagari Yuki. Nagari Yuki reluctantly is controlled by force via Happy Chaos' abilities to fight for him. Eno tests his abilities to see if he's the real deal, and he's revealed to be a Nightless, which is basically just a vampire exactly like Slayer. It's shown that the moment before the explosion went off, Axel used his time stop ability to attempt to save some of the people inside of the building. Eno realized this and takes the opportunity to speak with Axel. So I'm just gonna pause right here, no pun intended. Uh, I didn't really explain Axel and Eno's relationship much in the previous videos, but Axel's backstory is that he's from the very, very far distant past, and he was randomly thrown into the future. This is because via a glitch in the backyard, Axel and Eno's existences overlap almost as if they're the same person. Like, imagine if every human being on Earth was assigned a serial number by God. Well, Eno and Axel were accidentally given the same serial number, so oops. 
So despite Axel being a normal human, Eno's magical witch time manipulation powers often caused Axel to randomly be thrown into the future. Because of this, Axel was thrown 200 years into the future, leaving behind his girlfriend Megami as she now exists in the past. Axel is unable to go to the past to see her because if he used his powers to go back in time, he would destroy the current timeline that he is on. When Axel realized this in Exert, it made him depressed, and it was actually Eno's perspective and her ability to relate with his issue that cheered him up. Axel is an example of a character who has incredible power but is reluctant to use it out of fear of harming the innocent. While Eno is a character who, when faced with the same situation, would say fuck it and just do whatever she sees fit. It's stated that Axel can bring Megami to his current timeline, but if he does, then he himself will disappear. Why? I don't know, just go with it. Axel contemplates bringing Megami to the present because he would at least be able to speak with her for a moment. Axel warns Eno that the path that she's on will only cause her to lose her sense of self and leaves. Eno then allows herself to be captured by the Illyrian soldiers just as they planned. Soul, Jacko, Chip, and Anji arrive at the scene where the explosion happened. As they notice Happy Chaos driving away, they decide to chase him down but are unaware that Happy Chaos is sticked up. He says so much, but reveals literally nothing before escaping. Elsewhere in Illyria, King Daryl and King Leo discuss their anxiety about the upcoming summit and suspiciousness of someone as powerful as Eno being captured by a bunch of bums. Daryl says that he's hired someone to assist with monitoring the G4 summit from afar, which are Amelia and Zato, who were both hired by the government after their assistance with fighting against the Universal Will due to their abilities and handlings with covert information as being former assassins. Sol shows up at the location that Eno is being held in custody and 5Ks the door down and attempts to interrogate her. She says a lot, but reveals literally nothing. Jacko explains that that man created two Jackos, Jacko herself and a second copy. The first copy Jacko was created using the second half of Arya's consciousness in order to restore Arya whole again, which as we know was successful. But the second copy was created in order to assist with Eno. Not so much to assist with Eno becoming whole again, but actually in order to turn Eno into a normal human, possibly giving her the emotion of human desire that she lacks. Jacko explains that the second copy was named Happy Chaos. And this completely shocks Sol and Kai because that would mean that this Happy Chaos guy that's running around was created by that man. But Jacko shuts this theory down completely by explaining that that man never finished creating the second Jacko. If you remember in my Exert video, there's a scene where Jacko is talking to Raven about the second Jacko copy and you can hear Happy Chaos in the background laughing saying, I like the name Happy Chaos, I'll take that name. Well you see, that wasn't the second Jacko talking, that was actually Happy Chaos who happened to be eavesdropping on their conversation and Happy Chaos just stole the name. So Happy Chaos is not the second Jacko, but they do share the same name. Jacko reiterates that Eno's origin is that she was born from humanity's collective will to see a brighter future during the Crusades. Humanity's will was so great that the being it created, aka Eno, aka also Axel, was immensely powerful. The original witnessed the birth of Eno and stripped the being of half of its power, causing this being to be incomplete, lacking desire and its sense of self. The end result is the Eno we currently know. Eno's goal is to restore her other half in order to become an immensely powerful god again, but in order to do this, she also needs the tone. Jacko comments that she could stop Eno, but if she did, Arya's dormant consciousness within herself would never come back. To which this pisses Sol off. Sol and Jacko then talk about Izeo, a peaceful and beautiful island that Sol wants to spend the rest of his life at and take a break from all the wife killing he's done throughout his life. But before he can do so, he needs to go to G4 so he can kick his best friend's ass. As Sol departs for G4 Summit, Jacko stays behind with Kai to talk with Eno. Eno tells Jacko that she's the reason Eno learned the truth. That originally she is the power of the world itself, and that Asuka was seeking to turn her human because everyone is afraid of her power if she ever became whole again. Eno mentions that she also knows Jacko can turn her into a human at the cost of her own life. J just go with it. Eno recalls a man in the distant past named Will. She couldn't remember his face, but he had beautiful hair like a woman and impeccable zoning ability. They were lovers until one day Will disappeared. Eno mentions that her memories are fuzzy because they never happened. What she means by they never happened is likely that they occurred on an alternate timeline. 
You see, Eno has experienced several events over and over again and has traveled across many timelines, destroying previous ones in the process. She defines her life as having no past and no future. She compares her existence to living in an empty cage. It's all meaningless. Just go with it. Jacko and Kai then head for G4, leaving Eno in her confinement. Meanwhile, Happy Chaos infiltrates G4 in order to find Asuka in the tome. He has the ability to mind control others and alter their appearances. He uses this ability to mind control the guards at G4 into fighting for him and allowing him entry. Happy Chaos hacks the White House's controls and launches missiles at every major nation. He then gives the leaders of G4 a button they can push to cause the missiles to self-destruct in mid-air, which would prevent them from destroying the world. <laughs> Why? Because drama. Happy Chaos explains that he wants the Tome of Origin that Asuka has, but Asuka is in the most secure room of the White House that not even Happy Chaos can hack into. Only the US President Vernon can access it. As Happy Chaos is escorting Vernon to Asuka's location at gunpoint, Sol earns his check by punching Happy Chaos into a wall and running away with Vernon. But we can't forget that the White House is filled with Happy Chaos goons who are equipped with guns that don't allow Sol to simply heal as he normally could. They manage to hide for a moment and they decide they should call Kai for help, but all magical communications are jammed. They come up with an idea to use the old technology in the White House that still exists from the age before magic. They would use this in order to contact Zep and their leader Gabriel, who's part of the only nation that uses old technology instead of magic still. Vernon is able to explain the situation to Gabriel, meanwhile Daryl asks Happy Chaos why he's doing what he's doing, to which Happy Chaos basically says, because. Due to Happy Chaos's hacking, it's revealed that the White House has the ability to turn into a giant floating aircraft called Tir Nanag. Not even Vernon was aware of this. It was created during the Crusades as a sort of Noah's Ark for some world leaders to leave Earth and go to the moon in case humans got wiped out by justice. Happy Chaos has the White House set on a course to cross into another country's borders, and since comms are shut down, they can't explain to that country what's going on. So this will lead to the ship being shot down out of midair in self-defense. That man finds it strange that Happy Chaos even knows about Tir Nanag, or the Tome, or really anything as far as his magical aptitude. It's at this point that that man begins to realize who Happy Chaos really is. <laughs> ユーシー来最強の魔導士第一の男第一の男つまり世界に法力を伝え広めたというあのギアメーカーの死始まりの種の著者魔法の父そして世界が科学を放棄した時あまたの死闘を先導し復旐に努めた救世主君はアスカ
This is why Eno extracts Happy Chaos from Arielis at the start of the story. But in order to properly get the power out of Happy Chaos and into herself to become whole, she needs the Tome of Origin. As Sol continues to protect Vernon on the floating White House, a guard nearly kills Vernon, but Vernon ain't no bitch. Meanwhile, Gabriel decides to launch Potemkin at the White House ship in order to stop it from crossing enemy borders and getting shot down. Happy Chaos doesn't care if it gets shot down while he's on it because he's actually immortal. Anji and Chip explain to the US government that Chaos is also that man. Well, not really, but basically what he means is that the title of that man was the title given to a faceless man blamed for several atrocities during the Crusades. Some of them caused by Asuka trying to do the right thing, but it being perceived as bad, and some of it being Happy Chaos actually doing hood rat shit. So they both are responsible for the actions of that man. This is what Anji meant earlier in the story by referring to that man as this one as if there was more than one that man. He meant that man and Happy Chaos. Meanwhile, Sol beats up soldiers with a statue of Abe Lincoln. Sol and Vernon make their way to Vernon's office where he keeps a secret stash of Spiritus Type 48. As Sol describes it, it's a stupidly big battery with poor energy conversion efficiency. Basically, they're massive sources of energy that can even be used as bombs. All of them together are powerful enough to destroy the White House or even more than that, the world itself. Just go with it. The US government determined that they should shoot the White House down before it crosses another nation's borders to avoid conflict where it'll be shot down anyway. But they need to find a way for Vernon and Sol to safely escape before they can do so. Gold Lewis suggests since the White House is an airship, there must be an escape pod to which Gabriel mentions the most secure room in the White House, the room Asuka is being held in, is actually an escape pod that can be ejected from the ship. Chip also reveals that Nagriyuki knows Happy Chaos' weakness. Happy Chaos keeps Nagriyuki around for this reason because Happy Chaos is only in it for the thrill and he finds it thrilling giving them the opportunity to kill him. Sol and the others agree that they should see if they can ask Nagriyuki what Happy Chaos' weakness is. Asuka attempts to see if he can use his magic to take control of the ship and redirect its course away from the other nation's borders and also attempts to fight his former mentor, resulting in Happy Chaos getting dropped. <laughs> While unconscious, Happy Chaos speaks with the universal will, his creation. After coming to, Happy Chaos puts Asuka to sleep and changes the White House back to its original course. Sol and Vernon are suddenly attacked in Vernon's office, but luckily Vernon had a football nearby. <laughs> As they escape, Sol 2D's a pillar while expressing his discontent for zoners, until Nagaryuki appears again, but Giovanna, the one who's actually in charge of protecting the president, finally clocks in for work. It's revealed that the escape pod secret room that Asuka is held up in with the Tome of Origin is definitely an escape pod and it functions on old era technology. This is why Happy Chaos' magic can't open it. Sol and Vernon continue to make their way to use the escape pod to escape the ship before it gets shot down. On the way they're attacked again and Sol is blown off the ship but is saved by Potemkin. Potemkin begins halting the White House's advance towards the other nation's borders. Luckily, Giovanna was able to defeat Nagaryuki, except she actually didn't, to which Sol will actually have to fight Nagaryuki again. Chaos, the inner 
るものか必ず主を守りきれ言ったのかああだがゲイオスの弱点を聞きそびれたそれはもういい急ぐぞ They arrive at Asuka's location and open the door to the escape pod. Happy Chaos teleports inside and locks Soul and Vernon out, leaving just Happy Chaos and Asuka in the escape pod. This way, Happy Chaos can easily overpower Asuka and take the tome. Except this was actually just a bait by Asuka, as Asuka was not actually in the escape pod, but rather he was outside of it. So Happy Chaos actually just locked himself alone in the escape pod. Soul, Asuka, and Vernon eject him from the ship and then are able to regain control of the ship and redirect its course away from the other nation's borders. Asuka explains that the White House turning into a ship called Tir Nanag was actually created so that they could go to outer space and live on the moon. And in fact, there's already a space colony that exists on the moon with food, supplies, and shelter. Asuka says that he intends to take the tome there and discard it, but he still has his other goal that he has to attend with ridding the world of Soul Bad Guy. <laughs> どうだかなこれはまさか人間になったのか完全にってわけじゃなさそうだが。僕が犯した最大の過ちはフレデリックがアリアと共に生きる時間を奪ったことだがこれでもう君を兵器や英雄として頼る者もいなくなる100年前にやるべきだった<笑>大統領英雄ソルバット街は死にましたここにいるのはフレデリック・バルサラというただの男ですそれを世界に認めさせたかったのか<笑>またやれと言われてももう難しいぞ。So Asuka took the flame of corruption seed he planted within Soul at the beginning of the story out of his body, officially destroying Soul Bad Guy, and instead leaving behind Frederick Bolsara. So while it's kind of cheesy, that's what Asuka meant by ridding the world of Soul Bad Guy. Also, he wants to start a podcast. In the midst of their celebration, Leo discovers that the jacket Happy Chaos is wearing in the escape pod is different from the one that he was shown wearing prior. It's revealed that the Happy Chaos that they ejected from the ship in the escape pod wasn't actually him, but was actually some random grunt that Happy Chaos altered the appearance of to look like him. Happy Chaos was actually on the White House ship the entire time and just waited to reveal himself. <laughs> そして僕は僕のために存在してない存在するのは<笑>やった本物はこっちだってね Happy Chaos was able to successfully give Eno back the other half that he stole from her all those years ago, returning her to the godlike, immensely powerful state that she originally was, while Soul was reverted to the ordinary, normal human being he originally was. Eno had finally become a god, but nobody knows what she had planned to do next. But whatever it is, they want to stop her. Not really sure how, since Soul is just Frederick now, but Jacko prepares to sacrifice herself to stop Eno. But this man Kai was such a bro that he prepares to fight Eno, a literal god on his own, rather than let Soul lose his girlfriend again. As Kai approaches Eno, she enacts the ending of Evangelion.
ざと私がこれは。自由お前たちは自由だおいの上のやん力に立ちよろし場所時さえその全てのしがらみからお前たちを解放する。私に答えを示す Okay, so real quick, there's something I need to point out that I neglected to point out in a previous video, so I'm sorry, I apologize. So, in the Exert video, I explained that that man, way back in the beginning of the series, was given two seeds from his master that came from the backyard, Adam and Eve. It was explained that if these two ever came into contact, they would enact an absolute world that would destroy humanity. This is what the Universal Will's goal was. So, to avoid that, the original took both of these seeds and entrusted their safety to that man. One of these seeds is known as the Flame of Corruption, which is The seed that was put inside of Frederick, creating Soul Bad Guy, while the other seed, referred to as the Scales of Juno, was used to create justice. And as we know, justice had a child named Dizzy, and then Dizzy and Kai had a child named Sin. You see, when Sin was born, he was extremely powerful. In fact, Sin keeps an eye patch over one of his eyes in order to conceal his power, just in the same way that Soul uses a headband to conceal his power. To further keep Sin's powers in check because he was so powerful, Kai and Sin actually swapped left eyes. So the left eye that Sin has is actually Kai's eye, and the left eye that Kai has is actually Sin's eye. So this means that Kai actually has part of the scales of Juno, or Justice's power, within him via Sin's left eye. This is why Kai is able to access the Dragon Install. But he still gets bodied. Luckily, Axel manages to save him from being killed. Axel tries to reason with Eno but is unable to. This is when Jacko appears to sacrifice herself to stop Eno. ごめんなさい。何をしているの一方的に別れたら追っかけてくるんだろやめてもう他に世界を救う世界だとそんな適当な理由で俺の前から消えるな俺は決めたんだお前がアリアの半身として俺の前に現れた時何者だろうと何があろうと隣に居続けるとなダメダメきっとアリアも戻ってこない私にはおかげできることも<笑> 居場所だってない俺が一度でもお前をアリアと呼んだかアリアが帰ってこないならそれはあいつの意志だだがジャックをお前はアリアが残したかった何かだアリアのあの帽子なんだよだったら
たとえ世界が滅ぶとしてもそれだけは譲らねえこの男のそばにいられるなら世界が滅びてもいい結局お前たちは助からないぞまだ世界はあるようだな<音声>その花火があんたらの切り札ってわけ持ってきても私が消えることはない 100% なアウトレイジジルボットのエネルギーが続く限り出力が無限に上がり続けるどこだくそいくら待っていても答えは出ないお前だが待ってくれてよかったやつの右手だ手のひらを見せるように仕向けるここだありえないを言い換えるゼロパーセントでありえるそして無限はゼロを砕く<笑>アクセルあんたの言った通りだ私には何でもあった忘れちゃったのかなお茶したじゃん綺麗な浜辺を一緒に見ただろうあんた怖かったけど相談に乗ってくれた俺嬉しかったよ何でもいいから思い出してくれよ女みたいなブランドの So Eno's goal was to allow all of humanity to obtain the same power that she had. If everyone was equally a powerful god, then nobody would be unequal or a loser. Essentially, a perfect world. This would be the future to resolve the conflict of the negative emotions felt during the Crusades. Obviously, a world full of gods would naturally destroy a planet like Earth meant for humans. And they might even destroy each other. So, Ina suggests she would redo this world as many times as it took until she perfected it. But in the end, she was defeated through a combined effort of Kai scales of Juno and soul firing the outrage at an output of infinite power at her weak spot, which was located by Nagri Yuki. Defeating Ino this way meant Jacko, who finally accepted her existence as more than just a robotic Arya clone, did not have to die. In Ino's dying moments, she remembers that she and Axel were former lovers in different timelines. Axel was Will in another timeline, and Ino was Megumi in another timeline. With Ino defeated, the world would return to normal. Soul Bad Guy, known as a legendary hero, would be proclaimed dead, and a funeral would be held in his honor. Frederick Bolsara, on the other hand, is living it up in Ozea with Jacko by his side, now that both of them are human. Axel is surprised to see what is heavily hinted to be Megumi. You see, Eno in her dying moments used her powers to do what Axel was afraid to do mentioned earlier. She brought Megumi to the current timeline, causing herself to disappear in the process. And Asuka finally gets to start his own podcast from space. The life lesson here is that the idea of a perfect world varies from person to person, and that a world without evil is also a world without good. That just because life is a series of hills and valleys doesn't mean we should flatten it out. As long as you're striving towards a better future for yourself, you can make your own peace. Oh, please don't wait for me, darling. Stay out till the cold rain. For you a heart may be camerasty Oh please don't wait for me darling To stand there in the sea
僕は存在している。